It's game three of the series from Columbus as Minnesota goes for the sweep over Ohio State today. Golden Gophers have been one of the hottest teams in the Big Ten. They've got the longest active win streak in the Big Ten. Just dominant. The last month, a resurgent season for Minnesota. Ohio State will try to salvage a game on senior day today at Buckeye Field. This win streak for Minnesota has vaulted them into third place in the Big Ten standings. They still are alive for a share of the Big Ten title, but they need a ton of help from Northwestern at this point, who can clinch a share of the regular season title with a win over Nebraska today. Hey everyone, it's great to have you with us. Jack Kyes with former Big Ten pitcher Gabby Sprang. So Minnesota looked the part coming into the series, one of the most dominant teams in the Big Ten. And they've taken care of business so far. So coming into the series, uh, the offenses for both teams, really two of the best in the Big Ten, but the pitching has dominated to this point. In the air, right center field, back to the track, to the wall, it is gone! Jess Oakland's 12th blast of the season, and the power persists for Minnesota. Lined out to center field, pushing McFarland back and makes an outstanding catch. Falling into the wall, Jada McFarland. They called her Air Jada for a reason when she came to Maryland. One and two. Upstairs, Davis on the move, tag applied. Schlotterbeck a chance to deliver again. Strike three. Swing and a miss. Autumn P spectacular. And Minnesota closes out the series with a 7-0 win in Columbus. Joined by Ohio State head coach Kelly Kobach Shanley. Coach, your team started to rally there. What did you like from those last few at-bats? Coach, why'd you make the pitching switch to Trinity? I really don't want to look. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Thanks for the time, Coach. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Uh, All the tomfoolery. We're here for it. <laughs> we appreciate it. I'm sure Coach does, too. <laughs> it is amazing what you can do with Gatorade Cups. Sam Hackenbrack leading off for Ohio State. Bottom two. Game three of the series. Minnesota. Took games one and two on a seven-game win streak. The hottest team in the Big Ten going for the sweep today. And this is laced foul by Hackenbrack all over that pitch from Peace. Yeah, she's just a pure power hitter, and she's able to hit it all over the park. And she's somebody that, honestly, you should a little bit kind of be careful with. Don't leave it too fat across the plate, or she'll definitely take it over that fence. Talking to Kelly Kovac Shanley earlier in the week, we asked her, what do you think makes you dangerous in the postseason? All she said was Sam Hackenbrack. Yeah, getting her bat in that lineup and being consistent again like she was last year, really just proving herself and able to kind of turn over that lineup and continue it and get those runs for that team. It's really been a tale of two halves this season for Hackenbrack. Coming off surgery over the offseason, she didn't practice all fall, got off to a very slow start but you saw the numbers the last 24 games. She has been nearly unstoppable until this series. Yeah, and I think that also goes back to she's back to catching and being able to play both sides of the field and being more comfortable and like healthy and feeling good, it takes time. And she it obviously took a little bit time in the earlier of the season and now she's kind of hitting her stride when she really needs to. One and two the count. It's a great point you make up about getting back behind the plate. She wasn't really catching a whole lot early in the year. That's got to make you feel just more involved in the game. Yeah, and just more like of an all-around player like she was and she has been. And so it just makes her feel more comfortable and like, okay, I'm back. I'm good. Jack Swing held off on the pitch in the dirt from Peace. Well, we mentioned that she struggled this series, just 0 for 6. Here's another look. And that's just a changeup that she's able to lay off of that pitch. But it's a good pitch, and it's able to kind of change that eye level and just let Sam Hackenbrack know that I can throw an off seam pitch at any point in this at-bat. Ooh, strike three. A generous corner there. Laura Head made the call. And Sam Hackenbrack is not too pleased. Yeah, this is a pitch that it gets really inside on Sam Hackenbrack. And honestly, I don't know, that's a close call. But hey, she called it, and so you gotta you gotta be ready your next at bat. 
Yeah, she was pretty sold. That was ball four. Yeah, I mean, if I was her, I wouldn't be too happy either. That's that's almost on the chalk. And that's picked up on the fly by Stralo. Reached down near the ankles to make the catch for a quick second out. Brings up J.C. Roberti. First five retired by Autumn Pease. Another off-speed pitch for strike one. There's that changeup. And a lot of pitchers, it's hard to throw that changeup for a strike. But Autumn's able to throw it in the dirt, like we saw at the last at-bat. And then she's able to also throw it for a strike at an 0-0 count. And going back to that called strike three, on Hackenbrack, that has to encourage Pease and her attack mindset even more if she knows she could get that call. Yeah, she can expand the plate a little bit more and kind of miss those hitters a little bit. But then also on the other side, Ohio State, they need to also be able to know that they have to cover that side of the plate. That grazes the edge to Roberti. Close to the same spot, maybe an inch further out. Yeah, that's a good pitch for Autumn Peace right there. And she's just going to continue to pound that corner that she was able to get that swing or that looking K. Two and two, two outs. And the pitch from Peace is in the air, out to left field, and a diving catch. Sunglasses off and everything. Amani Bradley in foul territory. She's just able to go after this and lay out for her pitcher, and this is this is all you can ask for out of an outfield. 